having an early season opener, no matter if it's September uh, 3rd, October 1st, wherever that is where you're turning, into, turning in from uh, in preparation for that opener, guys, it all ties to this video, the re routine of these whitetail deer. If you don't have a property, so we're going to dive right into this one. If you don't have a property that a deer can routinely use throughout the summer, um, what I find is it's kind of a tall uh, chore to ask, if you will, for a buck to come back and know his way around the property uh, efficiently. So we're going to talk about having it set up and then we're going to talk about some other things here. So having it set up so the deer, a, a buck of any age structure, can navigate around the property. Why is that so important? So let's touch on this first. It's There's a very fine line between having a summer property and having a fall property. What we need to do is we need to have a, a joint property. We need to have a property that offers uh, enough of both to get us to the finish line during the fall, during the hunting season. Well, like I said, September opener versus October opener. There's some other things that you know we look at here a little sooner um, than maybe an October or a mid-October uh, you know uh, opener state does. So having that property routinely so the, the bucks can move around that in a routine fashion through the summer um, gets us to where we are right now in September, right? Going into a September opener. I'm a huge believer of this, guys, and it's something that I have studied throughout the years um, on both sides of the fence, if you will, my free range and my experience uh, inside the uh, high fence world. Um, guys, it all ha goes back to really focusing on the... the uh, the bucks have to know their way around a property, I feel, to be efficient navigating around that property come the fall during the season dates when you can get in and hunt them. Now, September 1st, you know, versus uh, November 1st, two totally separate, separate deer movements, thought processes, mentality, right? Uh, but what I find is this, I find a lot of clients around the country are either on one side of that spectrum or the other, not a 50-50 blend. I really feel that's why a lot of the properties don't ever come to their full potential for that reason. Uh, you're either a summer property and you have all the summer bucks, or you're a fall property and you don't have any of the summer bucks, and by the time that the, the, uh, the deer try to navigate through it, and they're really going, you know, um, Maybe it's a hit and miss property during the fall because they don't know where everything is at. Will they find it? Eventually, yes. To me, I like to have that uh, pattern, that routine, that that movability through the property so they can dissect that in the summer so they know where they're going in the fall. They can, they're way more efficient. You, as a hunter, can be more efficient if you're not chasing that. Why is that? Predictability. If these deer are using it routinely through the summer, the predictability to hunt them in the fall can be a great, great thing. So where's the fine line? How do we draw that line in the sand right between a summer property and a fall property? Well, what we start with is we start with not all the amenities or the buildability of a property. Not It's not always all focused towards summer. That's summer movement, right? That's the biggest thing. So we're not putting big, large three, four, five acre food plots uh, on ridge tops that we have to get through to get to the rest of the farm. We're keeping that mentality about, you know, how we're going to access the farm come the cruising time because that's one of the biggest things. Plant food just because it got given opening right, let's plant a bunch of food. Well, then, the, you know, the navigation part of this comes in and we can't get on and can't get off the property because we're blowing deer. So does it work in the summer? Yes. Are you feeding deer? Yeah. I mean, can you uh, can you say that maybe, you know, the stewardship part of that is strong? Yeah, you can, but it doesn't help the huntability. So the stewardship and the huntability have to connect, and I feel that's through a process of having a farm that's very routine to to a mature deer, of, of you know, a deer, of, a buck of any age, any deer in general, but having that routine property set up so they know where they're going and they know how to dissect the property. So first and foremost, watch the large food. You know, put your if it's ag, that is a destination. If it's a large food, large food plot, that is a destination. Is it a is it a shot plot? You know, a, a plot that you're going to hunt over. 
you know, you all this ties into the profitability of having the fall be productive for you. So touching on this, one of the things that we're going to touch on, guys, and we're going to do other videos throughout the fall on this, is this homecoming theory that you hear, or this topic, right, the slogan that you hear. I, I have a little bit different, uh, you know, um, take on that, uh, a little different twist, I guess you could say, than maybe some of the, uh, somebody else in the industry. Um, my idea of the homecoming buck is, is they have to be able, if they're able to navigate it, if they're able to have a routine pattern in the summer, they know where they're going come the fall. How is that tied together? Um, if, if your fall, if your property is only set up for the fall, it's probably more dense than it's, than it's going to be in the summer. So, you know, having a dense property isn't a, is a summer, is not a summer property. Why is that? They don't want to crash the velvet through. Now your does, that's a different story. Your doe bedding can be thicker than thick in the summer and it can be thicker than thick in the fall, right? The buck, the way of the, around your property on a cruising buck mentality a buck in general is not that way. When that headgear is, is uh, there's velvet on that headgear, they are not going to crash around in that stuff. So to me, having that property that's so thick, you kind of take half of the season away, let's say, on the predictability. So I go the extra mile to make sure my transition that you hear me talk of uh, is, is, you know, you have to maintain it. Uh, it's not wide open. Um, it's not 20 feet wide. It's not 40 feet wide. It's not leveled. It's not completely mulched. We build them maybe that wide to begin with or that style to begin with, and then we let it regenerate. So there's always that movable food on the ground. And then the reason that sometimes we have to open them up wider in certain areas, depending on your canopy, right, is to get that sunlight down to make that dense. Well, you make density, edge, and you tie edge and density with contour, and bam, you're in business. So those are the things that we set, how we set a property up in preparation for the, the, the fall. So my property, the deer can move around my property on all aspects from does to mature bucks. Those deer can use my property the same way in the summer that they can in the fall. And what you're going to find this, guys, uh, it is re in relation to that is this. Proof is this. Um, 75 acres, roughly 75 acres now in central Kentucky. Um, I've got 10 bucks on here on the farm over three and a half years old that we are identifying and actually have tied names to, right? That's not the total bucks on the property. Uh, last year I had 26 different bucks, uh, it's, you know, not all named, but 26 different noticeable bucks all the way down to spike and four points, right? Uh, two five and a half year olds, a handful of four and a half year olds, a boatload of three and a half year olds. So, but I didn't buy the property last year, guys, until July, right? The closing wasn't until July. So I didn't really know by the time I got stuff set up, you know, what was summer deer going into fall. Well, the deer that I had at the tail end of the summer stuck around going into fall, most of them. You know, there was some neighbors that were successful on some deer I had on the property here. I had a really good uh, fall. We passed up some good bucks. Um, I could have shot, you know, very, uh, very successfully shot a bunch of three, three year olds, uh, three and a half year olds, four and a half year olds, but I didn't know really what the property had to offer. Well, going into this year, guys, we have 10 bucks that are over three and a half that are here during the summer. And here is the connection of it. The proof is this, all of those bucks, except for one or two that are the newcomers, right? All of those bucks were here last farm using what I had created, let's say 25%, 30% of the build, right? And it's, it's 75 now, it's still not done, but they're, they, they're here. So they were there at the tail end of the summer. I picked up, last year I picked up about uh, four or five, probably five or six uh, bucks in the fall that I didn't have in the summer. So I knew there was a little room to grow as far as maybe housing some more deer, right? Uh, and now we go into the summer, we go into the summer of 20. Uh, 22 and all of the bucks that were here last fall the ones that weren't harvested obviously are back on the farm What's that tell me that tells me is that they're not that far away. They're not transitioning Miles away from my farm here. They're not transitioning that far their house. They're, they're staying pretty close 
And what that tells me is, is my habitat that I created uh, and added to didn't push them away. It only added to the power. It only added to the power of the property. So what what changes that as far as going into the fall and having a, okay, how do we know we went too far? How do we know we did something wrong? If you get to this time of the year and your numbers after a build or a late purchase like I had and you go into fall and your buck numbers, your mature buck numbers start diminishing, um, there's two things to look for, right? Two things. One is pressure. Is it you? First and foremost, put yourself right in them. Put yourself in those boots, guys, and answer that question because that is going to dictate how and what and where you need to do on the property, uh, whether it's me there helping you or you taking the advice from the channel and building. That's really going to dictate what you need to do, your, where your focus needs to be going into the 2023 build, building season, right? The season in general, but the buildable part of the season. Um, it should be inclining. You should be picking up bucks like I did last year, you know, so I knew my pressure wasn't um, too, too much. I mean, I think I had what I have... 16 or 18 sits or something like that. I have to go back and look. Uh, let's just say 20 sits on the farm last year. Some gun, some bow, because I know the pressure wasn't well. I had or too high, so I had I had bucks showing up. I had bucks, new bucks showing up right until January, so I knew that the property was inviting. So I added to it per the contour, per the habitat that was weak in certain areas. Like I said, I'm only 75% done. And now all of a sudden, I've got deer waiting around in our, sum our summer release program. The highest bucks I've seen this year from right here, from the front porch, was 19 different bucks in one, in one you know, evening. Sitting out here with a cold drink, watching the field. Knowing, is that going to be what our fall movement is going to be? Well, like I said, guys, uh, six, eight of those bucks, wherever the case is, that are pictured, six or eight of those were here last year. So... As a routine cap here on this, guys, remember this. Your, your summer, your property has to hold or be able to hold and entertain summer deer. If they're not, if the bucks aren't able to get in and around your property, if they're not able to, okay, maybe they're not using the potential fall buck bedding areas internal of the farm because we designed them a little thicker, right? But they're navigating down the transition, using your licking branches that are in place, um, urinating in those, putting them forehead glands on, on that uh, licking branch. They're drinking out of the water holes. They're using the mineral sites. They're going to the food plots. All of a sudden, guys, already right now, the first week of September, if I get a picture of a buck on one camera, I'm getting him on four or five. It's, it sounds ridiculous to some people, uh, but it's, it's very true. I hope everybody gets to experience a property like this someday. I feel super, super blessed. These properties are all over the country, guys. It's very simple. Don't overpressure your food sources. Build a property that the, a deer can navigate 365 days a year, not just a fall property, not just a summer property, and you will have, you will find success in your property, um, you know, tippy-toeing on that fine line. Let me help you determine what that fine line is. That fine line is is creating it but having it navigatable so your food is here so your browse is correct so the deer can experience it they know where the bedding areas are so when they come back and everybody parts ways when that velvet is shed everybody parts ways and everybody finds a pocket everybody can find a pocket if they're not a core buck a core buck meaning you know it's hard to have a core buck on a 20 and a 40 or an 80 right but a core buck meaning in that area or in your area he will relate to the property. The more he relates to the property, the more he knows about your property, the more he's going to relate to your property. So anybody that tells you that, you know, you shouldn't have summer deer on your property, the bucks that are here in the summer aren't, uh, are, should be a huge concern. Um, there is some truth to that if you have intel that they always leave. But if you're buying a new property in your building and your structure, your mindset is to try to keep those bucks to fall, there's nothing wrong with having summer bucks on a property. If you lose them, put that weight on your shoulder because there's more you can do to, to hold them. Here are the ways that you can have summer bucks and have fall bucks together on a property 
and uh, and have that success of seeing velvet bucks and knowing that they they have a place to call home coming fall instead of just saying well don't put your cell cameras on until uh, September 1st and it doesn't matter what's on your property in the summer well that is hogwash don't believe that because if that's the case you are taking half of the year away from a deer uh, routine the deer's routine or mentality and you're put, you're throwing it in the toilet I, I don't feel that that's a good decision at all as far as a land manager so there's a lot of things to tie to that right food plot programs uh, habitat creations uh, feed stations cameras access hunting pressure all that ties into it right but moral of the story is this guys you can have summer bucks and fall deer and fall bucks that stay around that stay close to your area by doing simple simple things such as building a property that they can navigate around that isn't just so thick it's a fall and a fall property only because here's here's the deal is guys is this if someone some of your neighbors has a very palatable food plot program that's not being pressured uh, that has correct habitat nearest it that the does are there and they have areas for bucks why in the world are those bucks going to leave that when they know those does are there and they know that they were there all summer long and they can eat and they're not getting bounced out of there the nutrition is great the property is giving them what they need through browse this property is giving them what they need through the the high nutrients uh, that they're getting through the food plots why in the world are they just going to come over to your brush choked off property other than when the cruising part or the the rut kicks in so you're taking your your property and you're putting it right in a you know keyhole in your property if you will small small amounts of the year um to me let's build these properties so the deer can experience it and then so you can experience the deer the white-tailed deer routine throughout the entire hunting season thanks guys